And then we must learn again to pray them. And Krishna told in his spirit how to pray. And told that evening in Gopu. And his one daughter But we see after that, Nandas to Atman Ullande. Nandas to what? They are young. One son, one daughter. At the same time. When was their duty prayed? And then Krishna told that, take me to go, keep me there and bring my God and bless you. In this way, you began thank you and thank you. After that, some death passed and <coughs> they were killed. The sister of Kans was married. To Vasudeva Mahara, a sadhu, very poet. When Devi and Vasudeva were going on chariot after marriage, at once a voice came from this God. And told Ray Kans, to whom you are carrying with so happy names, the Ashtam Sahib, eight sun will kick you. And then she kicked uh, Kans. Oh, your past. This son, your son, uh, your to, from whom your death is there. It has come anywhere in this way. Comes again to think what to do. Then he called this all mantris, ministers, advisors, ministers, advisors, and told. In ten days, do those who have taken birth, they should be given charu, moshe, all those who are not born. There are so many his friends and court. And then Putana came outside. Brother, I will do. Give this task. I will go everywhere and kill them all. And thus 
safe flight here and there and began to kill all the sun who were killed but at the mercy of God to went to the Jaman house and there he gave poison all Jaman sons gone in the last hour she went and woke up Gopuri is a place prakat praja where any devil can go but how she went by the mercy of Krishna for Lila Pushti of Krishna she went there and what he
So Bob and he did not. Krishna accepted both his eyes. Yes, I will count you will give me milk, and you will also try to poison me. So that same Ratnala came in the form of Puta now. Put means what? Who is ever pure? Also Put means Putra, son, who had no children. Therefore she came to go cool with the intention of killing Sri Krishna. Therefore Sri Thakur Bhattavila in his book Sri Krishna Sankhita, he describes all the 18 or 19 demons which are killed by Krishna and a few by Bhavara. Each of these represent one ananta or one obstacle in spiritual life. Therefore, Putana represents false guru. Because she came dressed like a gopi, like a mother, but her intention was to cover the appearance of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Tako Bhattamila, he says, one should be very careful of these demons appearing in the form of devotees. Therefore, his son, one nice Sikhaya, there's one Saru, be careful. Who is he? He is Kali Chela. He is not a disciple of Krishna. He is a disciple of Kali Yuga. Very hard to recognize him. Why? Tiratna Atimala. On his nose he has Tila. On his hand he has Mala. His mother name is Kopipala. He has shaved head Kopin, like Chukyami Sanyasi. But everyone calls him Uncle. But why is he associating with you? Just to grab your wife. So one should be very careful of these demons in the form of sannyasis, in the form of devotees especially. They were put in the cave as false guru. Because immediately Krishna will appear, she could not tolerate. I must finish him, I must cover him. Therefore she took the form of a very attractive young Rajagopi. And when she entered, all the Gopal Basis, Rajabasis were amazed. Who is this lady? She looks like Lakshmi, but in her hand she has no come on, no lotus. Therefore she was very attractive. All the rich masters became stunned by her beauty. Therefore she entered very easily within the compound of Nandababa, Nandababa and Purani Goku. She was so beautiful, no one dared to question, who are you, why are you coming? She was so attractive, even Mani Soya, in her humility, she thought really, she must be the real mother of Krishna because she is so much attractive. Therefore, when she entered into Krishna's bedchamber, then Krishna, who knows everything, when he saw her, he closed his eyes. So Acharyas have given several reasons. First reason, Krishna is thinking, I'm going to kill a woman, this is not very auspicious. Therefore, he closed his eyes. Also, Putina could understand this child was like a fire covered by ashes. Therefore, if she looked in the eyes of Krishna, she would be too afraid to approach him. Therefore, to encourage her to come near, then Krishna also closed his eyes. Also, Putina was coming to kill him, but she was dressed like a bridge master. So Krishna was closing his eyes and thinking, where am I going to send her? So many reasons maybe Krishna closed his eyes. So Putina came. And on her breast, she had put very horrible poison that is called Kalakud Bish. When the devas and the demons were churning the milk ocean, that poison arose, and she would drink very, very powerful. Some drops of that Kalakud Bish, that poison, fell on scorpions, snakes, and other entities like that. So all the poison you see in this world is just from one tiny drop of Kalakud Bish. And Buddha had smelled her entire breast of that. So she took baby Krishna on her lap and she began to breastfeed him. So Krishna, he fake your eye. Krishna never sees the faults in anyone. Even Guru Vaishnava, they call him Adosa Dasi. Guru Deva Vaishnava never see our faults. Only if we have one quality, even if we don't have a quality, they have their imposed their qualities on other persons. Guru and Vaishnava in this world never see the faults in anyone. They want to speak of Bhagavan and Krishna. Krishna is famous, he is Bhagavan and Janana. Krishna accepts the essence of everything. Like Vidurani, she offered green banana peels to Krishna. 
Krishna did not say she is offering the skin of Madonna pills. What did Krishna say? She is offering me so much love and devotion. Therefore, Krishna neglected to see all the faults of Putana, her demonic love, her coming to kill Krishna. Krishna saw one good quality. What was that? She is come in the mood of Mala. Therefore, how kind is Krishna? She took Krishna and began to push her breast in the mouth of Krishna. And Krishna began sucking. He began sucking so hard. He began to suck the live hairs out of the body of Putana. And when Krishna drank the poison, he drank all her anatas. He drank the gross and subtle bodies. And as she had the pride, her life there was beating Putana. She began screaming, Oh child, leave me! Child, leave me! And with the strength of 60,000 elephants, she tried to push little Krishna from her breast. But Krishna is very kind. If one comes to Krishna once, then how he will turn? Sarvadharma Pritaja. If someone comes to Krishna even once and cries, Oh Krishna, I am yours. Forgetting you, I can do this well. From that time, Krishna completely accepts someone. So Putana had accepted Krishna once, then how she can give him up? Therefore, Krishna was holding on very tight. Oh child, leave me. Child, leave me. But she could not push Krishna from her breast. Therefore she thought, I will run to Kams Maharaj, but Kams Maharaj will save me. Therefore, as she was running towards Mutura, she took her natural form as a horrible witch, 12 miles long. And when she was running, then Krishna sucked out the life and she fell down dead. But Krishna made sure she did not fall within the boundary of Rajamanda. Where did she fall? On Krishna's head, on Kams of Sveshti all kinds of mango trees were smashed by Putin. So, when the Vrijvasis heard and saw that Krishna had been taken out by the horrible witch Putin, all the Vrijvasis, Mother sort of could not move. She was like, because Krishna is alive and the life Krishna had been taken, it is as if her life had been taken from her body. Therefore, she was simply standing there like a painting on a wall. She could not move. All the other Vrijvasis, they ran to where Krishna was situated. And Krishna was sitting on very high up, dressed in Putana. Therefore, devotees have said, this one rule in the Vedas, when a child is born, a child is not coming outside. Which was not have that much chance with Dasha and baby Krishna. So all which was too much crying, how we can see the son of Nanda, how we can see the son of Nanda. Therefore Krishna gave this opportunity, because Krishna was very high up, dressed in Putana. How to bring him down? One which was came to make Krishna his lap, passed to the next baby, therefore Krishna came like a chain, like Parapara. Now it's a very well got a chance to hold baby Krishna in their arms. And that was given back to Mani Sarah. So, as Putana was killed, then Nanda Baba, who had gone to Matura to pay his annual tax of ghee and yogurt and pani. So when he was there at Matura, Basuka Maharaj had won. Oh, you should return to Gokul because there will be many problems there. So when Nandavala was coming back from Gokul, then he saw this huge dead body of Krishna and baby Krishna there. Therefore the Pujabasis then chopped up the body of Krishna to burn her. But because she had been touched by the hands of Krishna, her body smelled like incense. So everyone was astonished. How this happened? So anyone who comes in touch with Krishna, anyone who comes in touch with Krishna, all their bad qualities will be removed, like Putin are attached to Krishna. So, that time, Sukhita Goswami, when he was reciting these pastimes, he said, A whole fucking young son of God will be known. He got us the idea of the baby that I'm catching up on the Kutu and I'm giving all the son of God. Sukhita Goswami became a man. A whole fucking young means. If Putana had given some one drop of milk to Krishna, he could have said that Putana did some seva. But she had not one drop of milk. Therefore, Sukhita Goswami said, Oh, how amazing! She did not do any seva to Krishna. She only came to pretend to be like a mother. And what did Krishna do? He gave her a position in Galop Vrindavan Dhatri. That means like a mother, like a nursemaid. But not in Rajagopal, but rather in Kolov, 
Let it break down and go over it break down one separate section of the number. So Sumira Goswami says, Kim Lord is the number If Krishna gave such a position to Putin who came to pretend to be like a mother and kill Krishna, then imagine what Krishna would do for us. Therefore, Kim Lord is the number of Who would serve anyone than Krishna? Because he is so much merciful. Sri Krishna Chandra Ki. Not Krishna. 
and the Krishna coming from me, telling Mother Devi Dev used to abuse me and to tell that your son had done like this. Intimation going on Lila and one day what we can
sweet rice, yogurt, very nice preparations. So we just heard the leader of Bhutana, who also wanted to put Krishna down from her breast. She had the strength of 10,000 elephants, but she couldn't put Krishna down. Mother Yashoda easily put Krishna down because her love and affection is overwhelming and it controls Krishna. She's Krishna is controlled by her love. So she goes and gets the milk. The milk is in so much anxiety, I will commit suicide because I'll never have a chance to serve Krishna, so I'll jump in the fire. Because Krishna's ability to take the milk is unlimited and her best milk is unlimited for myself and him. So she went and got the milk, but Krishna wasn't pleased by this. So he decided to throw a temper tantrum. So he ran, he got got a grinding mortar and he climbed up on the grinding mortar and he broke the pot of yogurt and he was ticking. Okay, he broke one on the ground. <laughs> so, being very much angered, he did so many things. He even tried to feed the yogurt and butter to the monkeys. And when he saw Mother Yashoda coming back, then he ran and hid it. But she was a, like a detective. She saw the footprints of Krishna. Wonderful footprints of Krishna marked the pipeline. The beautiful lotus flower, the conch, the club, and the disc. So following these footprints, when she saw Krishna, and she wanted to teach him a lesson, not to be a naughty boy. So in this way she thought, what will I do? She threw away the stick. Krishna was, was breathing heavily. He was crying. The cosmos eyes were so, so beautiful. How could anyone catch Krishna Bhani? The Bhani should have overwhelmed Krishna with her love. And Krishna allowed him to catch him. She thought, how will I punish Krishna? I will bind him to the very corner that he was committed to the So, she took all of the rope in her house. In, in Vedic society, they bind the back legs of the cow while they're milking the cow because sometimes they kick. So she took the ropes for tiny cows. She put them all together, they're just two fingers too short. She took more rope and got some of the rope from other Gopi homes, and she also was two fingers too short again. Again, Krishna is sitting more unlimited. He cannot be bound. Finally, she took the hair ribbon. She was breathing out and she was determined. I will, out of love and affection, teach my son. Not not so she took the hair from her hair and eased it on Krishna. Our Acharyas explained that these two fingers are very important for us as Sadhguru. One of these fingers represents Sadhguru Bhakti, our endeavors in Bhakti. The other finger is the mercy of Krishna, Kripa. By our endeavors, and by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, then we become successful in our activities of Sadhana Bhajan. So, Krishna being bound by Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda went back to the kitchen to do her duties there. And there Krishna was still weeping and crying, being bound by Mother Yashoda. So the power boys thought it was very funny, and they were joking and making fun of Krishna, just singing. Krishna was very embarrassed, running more and more. The power boys attempted to unbind Krishna, but they were unable to do so. The power boys had sucked the rise of Krishna. Even Balaram, although he has some partiality of what's all your friend, because he's Krishna's older brother, he could not unbind Krishna. Then, when Nandava came, oh, Krishna, who has done this? Maya has done this. Maya has done this. So, 
नंदम महाराज अनुराम कृष्ण तो वो लाइस समय तो यार मैं स्पीकर स्पीकर बात दम कर दूँ पांच ही बातें दूँ Side by side. 
Now both fell down to the ground. And the most amazing thing took the place. Then right out from the from the broken tree itself, these two very resplendent and fortune big figures, which were demigods, huh? coming from the Hebrew planets. Actually, they were the sons of Kuvera, who was the treasure of heaven. And their names were now Kuvera and Manigrita. Yes, thank you, I was forgetting. <laughs> they they woke out of the, this uh, tree and they they immediately began offering prayers to Krishna and they uh, circumambulated him and they were the sons of Kuvera and their story of how they came into that tree is very interesting. They were the sons of Kuvera, as we mentioned, and they were in the heavenly plants and joined. And the heavenly plants, the level of enjoyment that is God, means of time is greater than the earth and the earth plain. And there, they were playing in one pond, and they were enjoying some heavenly dance. And they were completely drunk, mad drunk. And they were naked because they were playing in the pond with these heavenly down, 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 was enjoying themselves. They thought, oh, this is the best. Then Narada Muni came by, as he often does in many pastimes. Narada Muni came by, and these heavenly dancers, they saw Narada. And immediately they covered themselves up, they became very shy. It was a great sage. So they covered themselves up, they didn't want to say But the, the two sons, the twin sons of Uera, they became annoyed that Narada Muni had come and was interrupting their enjoyment, their pastime. And all, oh, oh man, why is he coming here? Interfering with our enjoyment. enjoyment. They became very upset. Why are you coming? They said, yeah. and Narada, Oh, how their consciousness has become so covered, completely intoxicated they are. And they're just completely naked outside, with no shame at all. In the middle of it. He said, oh, I, he was thinking he wanted to talk about it. Because we bear that treasure of heaven is his dear friend, a very close friend of the Lord. And he thought, how can I help them? So they thought, well, this consciousness they have, this is like the consciousness of a tree. Trees are outside completely naked with their arms in the air. Like that. So, Narada, he cursed them. They should become trees. And, but he lost, they were the sons of a dear friend of his. And he, and, and he cursed them to both his life. It's not as if you become annihilated or condemned forever. Because the curse of the devotee is actually beneficial. So the curse of Narada Muni, that they become trees, then he put that tree into an area, in a land, then the future, a thousand years, would be the courtyard of Nanda Bhagavan in Goku Mahavan. Thousands of years gone by, and then the tree was knocked down by Krishna, and the twin sons of the Vera had been married then by Krishna at that time for many thousands of years. And they circumvented Krishna, and Krishna, he said to them, they circumvented him, that they could return to the heavenly planets now. But after they fulfilled that lifetime and the heavenly planets, then they went to the local window. And Sri Jiva Goswami reveals their identity as uh, in Gopal Chambu as Madhukan and Shnikakan. And there in the house of Nanda Maharaj in the evening, they are providing entertainment for young the baby Krishna and Baladev. They're telling so many beautiful stories of different demons that were killed by Krishna, very magnificent stories. And those demons that were discussed by uh, uh, Manika. That were discussed by them in the Nanda Maharaj's courtyard, and Krishna manifested those pastimes when he uh, performs his manifest pastimes here in the end of the material world. And by hearing them, each of them represents a different anarchic armor and the whole pure Lord, I am the Lord. One thing about the untying Krishna we didn't mention. Okay. Uh, I 
So when Krishna was bound, still bound to the mortar, even when the trees were knocked down, I'll just finish it. They were still um, bound to the mortar. The demigods were free, and they were liberated. They didn't set off the little river to them. But Krishna was still stuck there in the courtyard of the mortar. And the mortar tried to go. So when the trees fell down, it made such a loud sound that another Maharaj, he came running. Oh, what is this? What is this? What is happening? There's a star that shook the earth. So the Maharaj quickly ran and he saw Krishna uh, bound to this mortar. So with great effort, he finally managed to untie Krishna. And it was very, very difficult for him because while he could show his love and affection and seem stronger than his, but with great difficulty, he managed somehow to untie Krishna. And then he took Krishna on his lap. And he asked, who has done this to you? And he whispered, he didn't want to say it first. When Maharaj had to ask a couple times, then Krishna whispered, Mother, Mother did this. And Maharaj was in shock. He didn't think it was impossible she could do that. And so he took Balade and Krishna, and they went down to the bank of the Yamuna, who was feeding them. Blood was from his pocket to comfort him. He was very upset. All day also eating him. And then they came back to the house later in the evening. And the money is So they, they came back to the house then. And money had showed up. Had been standing in the doorway of the house like a statue. She was, she was actually shocked and she one punish Krishna because that he wouldn't grow up to be a dagger or anything. So that he had to be disciplined. And when he when the Maharaj came back with Krishna and Balade, then Adhyashoda was there and they could see the state she was in. But Krishna, he didn't want to go to her. And then Rohini the Balaram's mother came and spoke to Krishna and said, oh, that she was trying to get Krishna to go to Mother Yashoda. And she said, if anything happens to, her, to your mother, then what will, what will you do? And since Krishna heard that, he realized, oh, well, I cannot do it without my mother, without Mother Yashoda. And immediately he ran up to her and jumped onto her lap. And she her. And everyone was waiting in joy to see the lovely exchanges between Mother Yashoda and
them spread not only all over Vrindavan, but reach Pratura. Krishna performs these beautiful pastimes, Niti Jit Swamila Virananda Gunde, Swagosha Dima Jantama Yalpayantam. Krishna performs these beautiful pastimes which drown his associates in Vrindavan in pools of bliss to teach all others who are worshipping Krishna and all in reverence to come more and more to understand Krishna's child and pastimes and come to a deeper relationship with him. So in the Torah, this news is coming about Krishna's beautiful child and pastimes and they reach the ears of one fruit seller. So many merchants would go back and forth between Vrindavan and Mathura, and the news would come from the Vrindavan side. So this fruit seller got an urge due to the Sarasaka from Vrindavan. The fruit seller got an urge to go and get darshan of that very beautiful Damodar. So she went to Vrindavan looking for Krishna, and at the same time, with the excuse of selling her fruits, oh, take bananas, take um, mangoes, take apples, buy the fruits for me. But at the same time, she was looking for how she could get the darshan of Krishna. But Krishna was sometimes sleeping, sometimes playing in the lap of his mother, in his room, so she couldn't get his darshan. So she would come again and again and try, and as she tried more and more, her eagerness became greater and greater, until finally she became so determined that do or die, I must see Krishna today, or I'm not going back to Ventura. Srila Gurudev said that we, in order to be able to get the darshan of Krishna, must also have that same determined vow. I'm going to hear the pastimes of Krishna. I'm going to not talk Java. I'm going to not criticize or hear Gasa. I'm going to read Vedaki and Gopiki and the pastimes of Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day I'm going to chant my Gayatri with proper meditations. My Java with remembering the songs and the songbook and the prayers that our Acharyas taught us. So she was very determined. And just like many, many fruit sellers, they're able to carry their baskets without holding on to them. They have such a balance that they can put their two arms anywhere they liked. So she would have her arms up in the air, and instead of chanting, fall low, fall low, take fruits, take mangoes, take bananas, she became so lost in absorption of Krishna, which is the qualification for doing good bhajan, lost in separation from Krishna and forgetting everything else, that she began to sing, take Damodar, take Madhav, take Govinda, Madhav go, Govinda go, Damodara go. Because Sankirtan, in a mood of separation, is the key for achieving the darshan of Krishna. Krishna is forced to go there and come uh, in the view of his devotee who's singing in separation. He's forced, he feels compelled to give that devotee his pure service. The gopis also do that, that system and so they sang their gopi beat. So Krishna hearing this uh, beautiful prayers of the lost in reverie of separation, this fruit seller, Krishna got off the lap of his mother. He was determined that I'm going to give mercy to this fruit seller. So I'm going to give my darshan. I want to see that fruit seller. So Krishna took some grains. But even though his, he was able to carry lots of grains in the beginning in his little hands, as he was carrying the grains, the grains fell through his fingers. You can imagine a little baby carrying, trying to carry something. So, um, so he came to the uh, food seller and asked to exchange, to make an exchange. Because in those days there was no money exchanges, but just 
water. So he came, he just had a few little pieces of grain stuck in his fingers now. And he came to the fruit seller and he said, give me fruits. So finally she saw her goal, her object, and she became so overwhelmed with love and affection that she forgot all of her existence and said, okay, I'll give you the fruits, but on one condition, you have to sit in my lap and you have to call me mother. So she's a low class compared to Krishna, who's the son of the king of Raj, and she's here to celebrate. So Krishna's looking in all different directions. Has anybody seen? Because if anybody sees me sitting on the lap of this merchant and calling her mother, surely everyone will laugh at him. But of course, Krishna's the supreme personality of God there. By his desire, there was no way around. So he saw, yes, the most is clear. So he sat on the lap for one second, called her mother, and jumped off the lap. Give me fruits. So she was now completely in total ecstasy. So she gave him so many fruits. First, that could fit on his hand. Then that was enough. But he extended his arms, so whatever she could fit on his hands and his arms. And Krishna quickly went away to the and showed all of his fruits. There were only a few fruits that Krishna could fit on his arms and hands. So his mother took the fruits and began distributing them to her associates. But because the nature of Krishna Prashad is that it's unlimited, she kept distributing and distributing and then there was no end. Mahar Prashad, Golden Day, Nama Brahmani Vaishnava. So the Lord gave a very, very deep uh, explanation of this prayer that we sing daily. Oh Mahar Prashad, you are on my different from Radha and Govinda and all of their pastimes. You're not different from the Holy Name which has the power to create and destroy innumerable universes. O Mahabhashara, you're not different from the holy Vaishnavas who come and spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Therefore, you can give me whatever they can give me. You can give me Brajwati and even Gopiba. And you can take away all my artists. So I beg you to do that. So this is the nature of Prashara, the body is sort of distributing and distributing. Meanwhile, what happened to the fruit vendor? She completely forgot anything of Matura or anywhere and just lost in remembering beautiful little two and a half year old Danada. So finally, somebody came over and held on her show, wake up, wake up. And then, instead of going back to Matura, she uh, walked towards the Jamuna. And as she was walking, her basket of fruits. Now when she gave Krishna a lot of the fruits, but her basket was becoming heavier and heavier. Not lighter, but it was becoming gradually so heavy. Finally she took the basket from her head and looked at the basket and she saw that what was previously fruit was now about diamonds, jewels, emeralds, sapphires. So you can imagine But what did she think? That Krishna has cheated me. I want Krishna and he's given me these jewels. What use are you these jewels? I want Krishna. So not knowing where she was going, she left and never returned again to Matura. So where did she go? Sure, the Purde explained that because she had such a strong desire to be Krishna's mother, Krishna uh, took away her gross body and sent her to become like a mother in Krishna's own abode. So this came to her by Sadhu Sangha, that she achieved this great destination. What to speak of, we have such association as Shukurde, who's come from the Nikunjas, who's the topmost guru, topmost Sadhu, because he's the personal associate of the highest mystery, Shumati Radhika. And he's offering us the greatest fruit, the greatest jewels of his uh, eternal service. So we're so greatly fortunate. Shodhurde Kijai.
now seeing so many problems there so many demons coming and also our cows are not grazing so all of the demons upan number and other four visitors give up this place and go to river jamuna river bad side very beautiful big bad so many new new things krishna will see so we should give up this and then first cows were going black and white two rows after that the guava majasoda and the rohini krishna in a car bula car and after that all prajavas left go and they came out the other side of jamuna nanda chakti kara sati kara sati kara means a village surrounded by cars They are playing Supreme Lord. He was first grazing small cows, small cows. So, Sri Krishna was. Playing with boys, making so many fun, and <coughs> he saw a very big bar, bottom, grey, who was that? You can, you can, but can. Guru Dev Guru Chandra, Radhe Kaya Kadale, Krishna Le Krishna Bhakta Le Bhakta Le Namo Namo Bhakta Kuru Guru Dev Chal Prasanti Bhakta Patita Nam Bhavani Pyo Vaishnav Dev Namo Namo Namo. So we are hearing very wonderful past times of Krishna from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam from the Lotus Feet of Buddha. And now, after Srimad uh, Buddha. Has described so many pastimes of Baby Krishna killing Bhutana and uh, Damodar Lila, etc. We were hearing about the pastimes which were uh, which happened a bit later, and uh, many many demons were coming to Vrindavan every day, even more than one every day, and the uh, whole community was very much worried about that. So, uh, but also Krishna. Uh, was known as a very heroic boy, and the cowards um, men were discussing. Oh, um, we remember the prophecy of Gangacharya. Uh, he was uh, giving um, Krishna's name when he saw his astrological chart. He said that uh, uh, Krishna was sometimes uh, very specially protected by Lord Narayana. In fact, Lord Narayana was always protecting him, even acting through him. So another pastime, uh, Shri Guru Dev 
has just mentioned was uh, a great crane. Was a great crane uh, who uh, was a great crane who Krishna has just seen, and uh, that crane was named Baka. Baka so he was another friend of Kamsa, and uh, Kamsa specifically instructed him to kill Krishna. So uh, the demon had a great beak, and he opened his beak and he started swallowing Krishna. And uh, the covered boys who saw that, they shouted, Kaire, Kaire. It means he swallowed him, he swallowed him. So there's a uh, village that takes us to in Rajamandu, which is the Kaire, which is uh, called Kaire. So and then Krishna. Uh, he, uh, as all Prishvasis thought, he was, uh, the Lord Narayan was acting through him, so he, with my mighty arms, he uh, took the demon's beak, like great big scissors, and he bifurcated him. So he opened his beak and uh, the demon was killed. So the coward boys, they shouted again, Kaire, Kaire, it means that he has, uh, uh, he hasn't swallowed him, but he was trying to swallow, but actually Krishna killed him, bifurcated him. So, uh, in uh, uh, Shri Krishna Shikshamrita, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is also mentioning this demon, and uh, he's saying that uh, Bhakasur is uh, the personification of arrogancy and, uh, and uh, Duplicity, yeah, duplicity and uh, a rough attitude. So Krishna uh, has killed this demon as many, many others. So other speakers will be telling now. Yes. Yes, yes. Duplicity, this demon personifies duplicity and the uh, uh, also as a um, symbol of Kapata or duplicity of a crane who stands on one leg. Um, he stands on one leg and he seems to be a great yogi and meditator. And he sees uh, actually not personality of God with so many fishes in the water. And as soon as he sees, he sees another fish, he wants to grab the fish with his beak. And immediately he enjoys his, uh, yes, his new adventure diet. His, uh, yeah, the, the taste of his new victim. So um, this is a great, this Lila is meditated upon by great sages and also by great devotees. And uh, they're encouraging us, some of us, to meditate on this Lila also because we are aspiring as. Uh, Sadhakas were aspiring to get rid of our anathas, and one of them, duplicity, is one very prominent anartha in our budget. We shouldn't be uh, pretending or being someone else than we are. Uh, genuine devotee always uh, remembers the Srila and uh, prays to the Lord Yitiananda Prabhu to remove the anathas of this life. Krishna, like rain, a kill Pasta. You remember?
but then any intention was so that they could restrict their sense of gender when they were young, so they can enjoy more and more marriage. So they are intended sex control, which is the number simply another form of cheating. So Batsasol represents that twin and after all, childishness and disobedience. No? Because Batsasol came as a young, playful calf, when Krishna killed him. Then what the immaturity and spiritual life is also one obstacle to that is finished by having the past time and concerts. Position, this very, very high situation, 